All right, so I got another video for you today. We're on a mission. This is Operation Find My Lost Fly Box. So let me give you a little background. So last week, went up to my family's cabin in North Central Pennsylvania in Tidot State Forest, where I'm actually at now, again, one week later. And, you know, we did a little bit of fishing, hiking, etc. cetera. Uh, caught a couple wild browns. Uh, here's a little bit of that. Oh, got one. Got him. That feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Oh, we got a nice wild brown here. Got him. All right, so we just got a sick wild brown, probably about nine or 10 inches. Hit the black woolly bugger, that's sick. Like I said, native brook trout, wild brown trout. Uh, so let's get the hook out of them, take a look at them, awesome. All right, so for a relatively small freestone stream in north central Pennsylvania, this is by no means a giant, but this is a solid start. Hit the uh, black woolly bugger in this nice little set of riffles up here. Let's take a look at this guy. Very, very nice, very nice. Let's get him out of here. Very beautiful fish, absolutely beautiful. Let's get him right out of here, that's sick. See you later, bud. That's my friend's target shoot over there. Woo! That's the sound of, that's the sound of freedom. So, not to make excuses, I'm more of a bootstraps type of guy, at least I consider myself that. Maybe other people wouldn't say that about me, but there are just so many leaves in the water. Like every other cast, I'm getting stuck on leaves. Um, and I think it's making it difficult for the fish to like see what I'm throwing, even though it's a big woolly bugger. Got him, got him, little guy, little guy. He's fighting though, looks like a nice little wild brown, if I had to guess. Smack the gray, parachute at him. Yep, nice little wild brown. Let's see if we can get over here. And we got him. All right, so let's get the hook at him and take a freaking look at him. All right, so we finally got a taker on the parachute atoms. That's great to know that fish will rise, at least smaller fish. This is about a five or six inch, probably five inch. Wild brown, wet my hands. We're gonna get him right out of here. Beautiful fish, absolutely beautiful. Adipose fin, that's really one of the only fin names I know. See you later, bud. That's great, that's great. So yeah, we got those uh, two wild brown trout uh, fly fishing on a tributary of Pine Creek right near my cabin. Unfortunately though, once I got back to my house, two and a half hours away in South Central Pennsylvania, I realized for the first time ever, I lost my fly box. So I have like a three level deep fly box that I've put together over the last couple years. And I did the math. There's a couple hundred, probably about 200 or so flies total uh, in that fly box. And I don't tie my own flies. So buying a new fly is at least like $2. So that's gonna be like four or 500 bucks, including buying another fly box itself, tax, et cetera. So I said, why don't I wait a week, drive back up here on my day off. I'm with my dog. I got my uh, almost two year old uh, black lab slash German shepherd. Uh, so the plan is we're gonna try to find our fly box. I know exactly where I was fishing last weekend on this tributary. Hopefully we find the fly box. Uh, and then we're gonna go to kind of an upper reaches section of this small uh, freestone stream. It's kind of a, like a little cousin to Slate Run and Cedar Run. It's in the same Pine Creek Valley and it's actually on the same side of Pine Creek as well. So yeah, the plan is find the fly box, go to a headwater section of the stream, hike with my dog, do a little bit of fishing. Yeah, so we're just following the creek bed where I believe I uh, lost my fly box. I have it narrowed down to like a 300 yard stretch of water. The only unfortunate thing is my fly box is literally gray. And as you can see, a lot of these leaves are very, um, a lot of these stones are gray, I'm sorry. 
A lot of these stones are gray. Um, so I haven't seen it yet. There's also a lot of leaves down that weren't down before. So yeah, it's gonna be a struggle. So we unfortunately did not, I repeat, did not find my fly box. We did two passes up and down the little stream, went out, went out to the mouth of the little tributary to Pine Creek. And I think it's because it, all the rocks are gray and a lot of leaves have fallen in one week. So I really couldn't find it. That sucks. I'm gonna have to buy all new flies. Fortunately, it's almost winter. So I don't really need to stock up on a ton of uh, dry flies, maybe mainly just like nymphs and stuff, but that's still such a hit. That sucks. Anyways, we're gonna make the best of it. Uh, I'm with my dog. He's probably gonna ruin this. And he's like way too far ahead. He needs to like slow down. Um, but we do have a nice little tributary. The flow is really good right now. So we're eventually gonna work down to the stream, fish for about two hours. We're not staying overnight. I still have, you know, like a two and a half, three hour drive home with no fly box. So beautiful day. It's probably 58, 60 degrees. It's about uh, 1 p.m. Like I said, I have about two hours to fish till I need to head home. Not staying overnight. Uh, last week it was very windy and there were a ton of leaves in the water. I mean, you can sort of see the evidence of that. But even right now, there's a lot of leaves in the water to the to the point where with a uh, single barbless hook trout spinner, which I'm using because I'm super ethical as a fisherman with a spinning rod and reel, um, I'm still getting snagged a ton. Like if I was using a treble hook, you know, I, I understand that, right? Uh, triple the, the chance to get snagged on a leaf, but yeah, pretty much every other cast, I'm getting stuck. All right, so no bites as of yet. Um, it is mid-October, no spawning. Uh, I know a lot of people like to assume what day I'm here, exactly where I'm at. You know, they assume they know the spawning patterns. I actually checked the uh, Slate Run Tackle Shop, which is like the go-to Orvis endorsed fly shop seven miles upstream from here. And they were not yet saying that they're spawning and they're, they're big on that. They don't even want you to fish like Slate and Cedar Run if you like read their little blurbs. They're pretty much just like, yeah, don't even fish these. Which is, you know, that's their prerogative, I guess. But, uh. Teddy, hold on. Come here. Um, yeah, normally during fall, you catch less fish on average. We have a chance for, especially on a stream like this, which is mixed brown and brook trout, both naturally reproducing. You have a chance, just a chance. Teddy, stop. You have a chance for a big wild brown. So that's what we're shooting for. I don't think we're gonna get a lot of big numbers today. A lot of leaves in the water. We're just gonna make the best of it. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. Oh, got him, got him, nice one, nice one. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. I think we got a wild brown here, my boys. Oh, that's a wild brown. That's a nice wild brown too. Dang, dude, that's like 12, 13 inches. Holy cannoli. Let's get him in the net. Oh, that's a nice wild brown, all right. So, we just got a real sick, beautiful, beautiful wild brown. Single barbless hooks, very ethical, trust me. Um, so let's get the hook at him, take a freaking look at him. My dog's just back there chewing a stick. That's wonderful. So for a stream bred, adipose fin red, uh, wild brown. This is this is a really nice wild brown. Let's let's take a look at them quick. Ooh, beautiful colors, absolutely beautiful. Extra red adipose fin, extra red. So on this relatively small stream, granted it's it's flowing a little bit low for fall. It, it's usually a little bit higher than this. You know I've caught true, and I have like pictures of it before I had the uh, YouTube channel. I've caught you know, 18, 20 inch um, brown trout in here, but I'm pretty sure those were either holdovers from Big Pine Creek or more likely they were the slate run browns, like the extra large German browns, which at some point swam up here, presumably to spawn. Anyways, as far as a stream bred brown, this is one of the bigger that you're gonna get. I'm gonna peg this guy at like 12 inches. Dare I say 13, maybe I won't, but let's say about 12 inches. Let's quick take a look at this guy. Absolutely gorgeous fish, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna put that at about 12 or 13 inches. That's real sick. All right, so we're gonna get this stream bred, probably 12, 13 inch wild brown trout. We're gonna get them right out of here. Oh, dude, that's that's a pretty solid trout right there. That's nice.
Sorry, I missed it. Just got our second trout. Nice, uh, nice little wild brown trout. Not nearly as big as the last one. Let's uh, not even gonna net him. A little on the small side. We're just gonna wet our hands. Actually, yeah, we're gonna net him. Let's net this guy. And we got him. All right, so let's get the hook out of him. Take a look at him. All right, so after a little bit of time, we just got our second wild brown. A little bit on the small side, probably about five, six inches. Beautiful colors though. Love seeing the different age classes. Really beautiful. Let's get him out of here. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. All right, so we left the uh, little tributary behind. Only got those two wild browns. On our way home though, we are gonna very briefly stop at uh, Pine Creek. We'll stop at really any um, any of the access areas from like Slate Run down to essentially Waterville. Uh, any place that doesn't have any cars, uh, you know, me and my dog will get out, cast out a couple times, see if we can get on maybe just a couple trout. I know they stocked like a week or two ago perhaps. Uh, Slate Run Browns as well. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that maybe for an hour. If we could put like one on the board, I think that'd be, that'd be pretty solid. So let's just see what happens. All right, so the first, honestly, like four or five access points right below Slate Run were absolutely packed. I was really surprised. We're talking like back to back to back to back fishermen. Some places I saw, you know, almost like 10 cars. I'd get out, a lot of people out fishing, surprisingly for mid-October, but they did just stock up here. So this place had literally no one. Um, that probably means it's beat, uh, if I had to guess. But anyways, I have my dog. That's a somewhat of a handicap. Um, it's getting dark. So honestly, if we could catch like one trout out here, I think that'd be great. No bites as of yet. No bites as of yet. The water is relatively shallow in here. I mean, it's there's some slightly deeper riffles, maybe like some two foot deep riffles right here. Getting stuck on a lot of leaves. I'm thinking all those other fishermen were in the money zone because they know where the stocking truck stocked and sure fish move around when the water levels are higher but maybe this is just kind of a beat spot otherwise why wouldn't there be any other fishermen here i don't know i don't know the answer but we haven't had any bites yet not yet we only really have about a half an hour to fish before it gets a little too dark for my oh got him got him got him there's a fish. There's a fish. Teddy, hold on, hold on. Hold on, Ted, hold on. Oh, there we go, got him. All right, so that'll be a really quality, quality stock brownie. Probably about 12, 13 inches, so let's uh, get the hook at him, take a freaking look at him. That's awesome, first fish on Big Pine. All right, so we just got a freshly stocked stocker. Um, very happy though, honestly. Um, I think in the cooler months, I'm pretty sure some of the larger wild browns, probably none of the brookies, but some of the larger wild browns probably use Pine Creek as like a super highway to get to, you know, other tributaries or whatever. At least I would assume that. Um, this is a clearly stock stalker, but not bad. I mean, there's actually some reds on this fish, the uh, little bit stunted uh, fins, but not bad. So we're gonna get them right out of here. Not a bad little, probably 12, 11 inch fish. We'll certainly take it. Someday in my lifetime, I really hope that you know, as the trees, as the trees get uh, larger and they shade the stream more and more, that someday in my lifetime, maybe when I'm like, you know, 60, 70 years old, if I'm fortunate enough to get that old, I hope Pine Creek in this section, not like the upper reaches of Pine Creek, which do have wild fish, I hope the main stem Pine Creek, at least down to like, like Waterville, it'd be awesome if, if it had had a wild, wild fish, specifically wild browns. Um, the biggest uh, detractor to that really is the um, water temperature in the summer. It just gets pretty low, especially like this summer. It gets low, it gets caught, a, I just caught a leaf. It gets low, it gets hot. Um, but historically, I think, if I'm remembering my history correctly, Pine Creek was well known as a native brook trout stream. You know, stories of pretty large brookies out here. Um, Anyway, so that's an encouraging start. If that's the only one we get, that's actually okay. All right, so with beautiful Pine Creek in front of us in the Pine Creek Valley, let's quick wrap up for today. It wasn't a great day. You know, we didn't find the fly box. We only got two wild browns on that Class A tributary. And then here on Big Pine, literally fishing for like 45 minutes or an hour. We got um, one stocked brown. So kind of a lackluster day, but you know, these are the days that presumably make you a better fisherman. 
and maybe I'll build my fly box back like better than ever. Uh, it'll just, you know, cost a lot of money. So anyways, 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 that's all we got for today. Thank you for watching. And hopefully we'll catch some more fish next time.